Are you feeling burnout at your job? Do you get stressed in your day-to-day tasks or feel like you're frantically chasing every email to hit your inbox? You're not alone. This is unfortunately quite common and is leading to a workforce that's exhausted and frustrated. In today's episode of Water Cooler Wisdom, we'll be joined by leadership coach Larry Rosenberg, where we'll discuss why this is happening and how mindfulness might be a supportive solution. So take three deep breaths and take a listen to this engaging conversation. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Water Cooler Wisdom. I'm your host, Jake Blocker. And I'm your host, Rachel Grail. So I'm working on my calming voice here in (laughs) preparation for today's mindfulness conversation. And unfortunately, as we failed miserably at, we tried to get a gong noise in there, but it wouldn't work. Gong. But, uh, <laughs> I'll do my best. There it is. There it is. That's all we needed. But uh, yeah, this, this is going to be a great conversation. I'm, I'm excited about this, you know, in all seriousness, uh, I'm sure mindfulness is something we all struggle with, you know, as much yoga I, as I do, and as much as many failed attempts at meditation that I do. <laughs> it's, it's a struggle for me. It's all about just welcoming what's what's here in this moment, isn't it, though? Pretty much. And yeah, yeah. in this moment, we are going to have an incredible conversation. So Rachel, you're ready right. to get into it? I am. Let's go, Jake. All right, let's introduce our guest, Larry Rosenberg. So Larry is a senior consultant at Interaction Associates and brings over 30 years of experience in leadership coaching and facilitating change across many industries. Larry specializes in leadership training, change management, and business process improvements. Uh, His certifications are extensive and include being an ICF certified coach, a brain-based coaching certificate from NLI, and a Lean Six Sigma Black Belt. Larry's expertise has benefited a range of clients, including Thermo Fisher Scientific, PPD, Citizens Bank, and General Electric. His commitment to personal growth is evident in his daily practice of yoga and transcendental meditation. Welcome, Larry. Glad to have you. I'm also really excited to have this conversation with you, Larry. And uh, since we're kind of gathered around the the remote water cooler, if you will. I want to talk a little bit about us at work. And I, I think at least my experience is that when, when I'm at work, I often check out from myself a little bit. I know that many of us get fully engaged in the work that we're doing, which can be great. But if we forget to take care of ourselves for too long, this can lead to exhaustion, frustration, burnout, Um, So really excited to discuss this with you, dive deeper into kind of why this happens, how we can lean into more supportive habits for ourselves. So I'm wondering if you could just start at like a high level. It seems like everywhere I go, people are talking about mindfulness. So to you, what does it mean to be mindful? And why would you say this is such a a relevant skill for our folks today? Yes. Um, it's a lot. So if we're, if we're sitting around the cooler and we're talking, I think one of the things we'll notice if I if I were to say, so Rachel, how how are you? What right. the things I tend to hear are busy, crazy busy. I'm hanging in there. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, dear, this is what I hear from friends, from colleagues. So I believe we are under a constant state of chronic stress. Maybe that's redundant. It's this. It's this low level stress that just doesn't turn off. And it's it's due to many different reasons. Um, So mindfulness to me, lots of different definitions. It's being fully present where you are noticing your thoughts, you're noticing your feelings, you're noticing your surroundings, um, but you're not overly attached to those feelings or thoughts or surroundings. Is there's a, there's just a healthy distance and then you don't feel the need to react. Typically we're on automatic reaction, right? Um, one of my, one of my favorite people is uh, Stephen Covey. And so he talks about there's reaction and then there's, he uses, he uses the word responsibility and he changes it to 
response ability gives you the ability to respond. And so mindfulness is a way of being that sets up doing things for more intentional focus or more intentional space. So um, it helps overall health, right? You had, you had talked about this, um, forgetting ourselves. So we can talk a little bit about some, some practices that can help. And and think about a, a ton of things that are causing this. Do you want me to kind of roll into those? Roll sure, into yeah. Roll. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so there's this term in the, you know, in the, us, us in the OD space, maybe you've heard of it, VUCA. And so, you know, this is our world. This is, these are, and these are the four adjectives. So it's, it's volatile, it's uncertain, it's complex, and it's ambiguous. And, and honestly, just saying those four words out loud, I think my blood pressure just went up a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, I may, maybe my face got a little redder. <laughs> um, because like how many people would be like, yeah, let's sign me up. I'll, <laughs> that's the world I want to live in. And so that is the, the state at the sort of the macro level. And at the micro level, at the individuals, what, Rachel, what's your to-do list look, look like? Oh my gosh. Well, which one? Because I have <laughs> to like put different lists in different places when I think of them. And, and uh, so they're all a little bit chaotic. Yeah. Okay. So big to-do list. And then Jake, technology. How, how many ways can I reach you? Oh, no. <laughs> too many. I don't even have my watch on. That's that's also communicating to me. So that that one's away from me right now. But yeah, far too many. You just called us both out in such an accurate way for us. <laughs> <laughs> just, just lucky. Just yeah. lucky. Um, so, right. So there's a ton of technology that can be used for good and it, mm -hmm. and it can be overwhelming. Um, it's been a while since I've been to Vegas or any casino for that matter. But sometimes I feel like life is like walking into one of those casinos. There's lights flashing. There's bells ringing. There's it's an overstimulation. For sure. So we've got a to do list with multiple priorities. We have the technology and we can list all the different devices in different ways. Um, there's the 24 seven news feed. Mm -hmm. And. Most of us know that news is by design built to have a negative slant. Mm -hmm. That's how it captures our attention. And we'll go into a little, bit, a little bit of brain science in a bit. So all of this stuff can create that chronic stress. So we need a way to combat that for our long-term health. And so we can be more effective at work. Yeah. Well, you, we talked, you talked a little bit about being reactive and want to go back to that. So can you talk mm -hmm. about what's happening when we're in this reactive space and how mindfulness calms us down and really what is going on in our bodies when all this is happening? Yes. Um, yes. Well, our, our bodies will feel it very differently. I want some things, you know, so Jake, when you're under stress, what's, what's the one thing that, you know, what do you notice? Oh, I honestly, I feel like I, it's hard to notice one thing. I, I think it, it's multiple things going on at one time, all competing with one another. So, yeah, <laughs> it's hard to pinpoint one thing. <laughs> yeah, we all, everyone's built differently and feels it differently. Rachel, mm -hmm. do you know like what's your telltale sign? Yeah, I get really like into action mode where I'm like, solve, solve, solve. I, I've mm -hmm. heard it said like mindfulness is kind of, you see like there's like our thoughts are cars on the road. And when we're not being mindful, we're just like chasing after every one of them. And so when I'm stressed, I feel that way where I'm just like running mm -hmm. after whatever little thing that I can to make it like calm, calm down a little bit. Okay. Yes, there's for me, I can I can my palms will get sweaty if I'm really if I'm really stressed. Mm -hmm. um, occasionally I can feel my face. I don't know if it can be seen, but my face gets kind of red. Mm -hmm. um, blood pressure goes up. I don't wear a monitor, but I'm sure it does go up. <laughs> All of these are the things that, that that we tend to see. Sometimes people get a little bit um, their stomach like they just get a, like, oh, 
little queasy, maybe a little dizzy. Um, public speaking is something that people tend to stress out quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And so these are the typical things that they say, this is what I feel. So let's do a little bit of neuroscience and I'm gonna use a, a model, um, a, a brain model. It's a bit dated, but it, for illustrative purposes, it works fairly well. So there's like three key points of the brain. There's this, the cortex and a lot of people, you know, the prefrontal cortex is a piece of that. That's where our higher functioning is. That's where we um, think, problem solve, make decisions, plan, regulate emotions. And there's the, the limbic system and the, the star front center stage, the limbic system is the amygdala. And this is the thing that picks up on emotions, right? Um, it's always scanning for threats and, is, and, and it holds our emotions. And then there's this other part, which is kind of the reptilian brain that think about it is it holds all these subroutines that are automatic. And so when we're not under stress, the cortex, prefrontal cortex runs the show. It's, it's our best self. And then what will happen is we'll notice something and the amygdala goes, wait a second, I'm seeing a threat here. <laughs> you know, it's like a red alert. <laughs> and it's, like, it's kind of like pulling resources away from the prefrontal cortex. It's the stress response. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you hearing the Star Trek? You know, uh, <laughs> red alert, at least yellow alert. Um, and and it sometimes it's called the fight or flight response as well. Fight, flight or freeze. Um, and it basically invokes some automatic, you know, way like chase the cars. This is this is what I do. So somehow in the past that got programmed in. And so we are under chronic stress. So our prefrontal cortex, where we do all our best thinking, is some people just call it being offline for a good portion of the day, or at least inhibited. It's not functioning at its best. And so that's those are the things that happen. Um, and what's interesting, the, some of the latest research shows that it, there's sort of two pathways there's the something happened and I have experienced something so similar to this before that the, the amygdala just takes over. It's this sort of visceral automatic reaction. There's no thought at all. It just happens. Mm -hmm. The other one is it comes from the prefrontal cortex. Like we're just thinking about something and we've been designed to survive, to, to anticipate threats. So this is where you start thinking, wow. So that that meeting, you know, we're we're uh, when making this scenario, we're laying people off, and this is what's in the news. I I wonder if you know, I wonder if I'm at risk, and then maybe I just had a meeting with my boss, and they just didn't seem the same, and so mm -hmm. we begin to anticipate risk, and so mm -hmm. anticipating risk at a level that's chronic, and it's like ruminating on it, and then that, and that's then that becomes worry, and then it becomes anxiety. Right. And it's the same thing. And then the anxiety, the amygdala is like, well, if you're feeling this way, here's what we need to do. And then you're <laughs> offline again. So there's different strategies to help with either one of those two things. Um, and the punchline is mindfulness practices help with both strategies, like both sources of that hijacking, if you will, of, of your brain. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I'm enrolled. So can you tell us some more of the like the tips or strategies that people can try out that can help them be more mindful, help them address that hijacking? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to take uh, notes because <laughs> <laughs> too much of this is ringing true right now. It, there, there's a lot. Um, and I think of I think of uh, there's there's a building of core muscles, if you will. That's like a, a, a group of strategies. And then there's some kind of preventative thing that you can do on a periodic basis. And then there's the, the interventions. And this follows some of, the, some of the models we've seen before. The what do you do in the moment? So the, so the building the muscles, um, the most common, which most of us have heard of, is, is meditation. Mm -hmm. um, and there are many flavors of meditation, right? Transcendental meditation, breath work, Zen meditation, and so forth. Um, there's something called mindful breathing, which to me is it just feels like a form of meditation. And so it's you just sitting, doing whatever, spending a few moments, just 
taking deep, slow breaths and noticing. What's amazing is anytime I'm coaching someone, well, I always start off with some type of a transition from the day that they've had. And I say, well, let's take three deep breaths together. I'm like, how do you feel? And it's always, oh, better. Like you can see it. Well, three deep breaths do not take a lot of time. Do not need any equipment. <laughs> Don't cost any money. Mm-hmm. And I always say, I should do this before every meeting. I should do this every hour. And then the dirty little secret is I don't, I still don't, but I'm going to start. And in fact, just preparing to talk to you about this topic has reminded me of the things that I could be doing better that I don't do and that have sort of dropped away. I'll be better going forward. So Mm -hmm. meditate, mindful breathing, mindful anything, again, being fully present. So mindful eating, taking your time, slowing down. Chewing more slowly from I've heard 30, 30, you know, every bite you put in your mouth, chew 30 times. And I don't know when you, sometimes I'm in a hurry. It's like <laughs> I'm inhaling this thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm running while I'm doing it. So mindful eating, mindful walking, just slowing things down, walking, noticing what's around. Um, these are some techniques. Yoga. And so I'm practicing yoga and it's one of my favorites because it's both physical and you're you're breathing. I think one of the keys is you're aligning your breath to your movement. Mm -hmm. And so a good yoga practice, and there's so many different ones, is it's like you breathe in, you inhale when you're opening your body and then you exhale when you're closing, which is stretching or twisting. And to continue to focus on that, then your your mind and your body are linked together through your breath. And one of the key things about yoga is be in this stance, this pose, this asana. And some of them aren't comfortable. For for me, most of them aren't comfortable. (laughs) Notice what your mind is doing while you're in it. Right? I have a fabulous teacher, and she'll put us in the chair pose, which is one of my least favorite. Like it hurts after eight seconds for me. Mm-hmm. And and she says, and some of you are thinking, like, when is she going to move on to the next thing? How long do I have to, to sit here? Is this really helping me? Oh, my gosh, I hate this. And that's the mind chatter. And so it's noticing this and then come back to your breath. And with meditation, same thing. Thoughts go by and you can say, oh, that's a thought. And you practice, oh, come back to the breath. Let the thought go. So you're building the muscles to control your brain a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Um, Those are some key strategies. Let me look. I've got a nice list. One of the things that I like about what you're saying is, is you've kind of given our listeners like this buffet of options. And I know one of the things that has helped me when I try to take this up, this work is to know it doesn't have to be perfect. Like I don't have to sit Mm -hmm. down on a cushion for 45 minutes in order to get the benefits of it. Can you talk about like, what's the smallest chunk that people can do (laughs) and feel really, feel really accomplished? (laughs) Yeah, no, that, that, that's great. Right. Because some of the things I mentioned, people are like, yeah, I don't have time for that. And you don't need much time. Every little bit helps. Mm -hmm. I would say start with noticing your breath mm-hmm. and, and look for some triggers. So practices are the beginning of forming habits. So maybe do it. Maybe you all join me. Maybe we can get everyone in our company that before every single meeting, take three deep breaths. When coaching people, and Rachel, you know, you're, you're a coach. So some of the key questions, well, what, what is your intention when you did that? And so always come to where we call them desired outcomes. Why are we doing what we're doing? Taking little breaks during the day is something else I think is really helpful. And it doesn't mean it does, you don't need a half an hour. Mm-hmm. Stand up, walk around, do three minutes of stretching. Just something good for you. Breathe, think some positive thoughts. Gratitude. That's another one. Gratitude, you know, being grateful. You can journal, 
which I never do because that takes time. Some people do it. It's great. But the one I like the best is when you notice something fun and positive, just spend 30 minutes enjoying it. I'm th sorry, 30 minutes, 30 seconds. <laughs> it's the, um, I've heard it's the story is, a, um, it was, I think it was Brene Brown's daughter. So she's telling the story and her daughter kind of closed her eyes and, and, uh, Brene said, what you, are everything? Okay. You're right. She goes, I'm just taking a mental picture of this moment that's so funny. I can come back to it whenever I want. I'm like, Oh, that's rich. So, and just notice it, right? And and relish it. You don't. We don't always have our camera with us. We don't always have to post it on Instagram. Mm -hmm. But just take a few extra seconds to enjoy something that was positive. I think there's a nice quote on that. I think it's Robert Bly, and maybe I'm gonna totally massacre it, but it's something like, "Do one thing at a time, carefully and with full absorption. Time will stop yeah. for you if you do." And with time suspension, you will gain a taste of bliss in your soul. That is beautiful. You heard that one? I think that's a, my mom used to write these like inspirational quotes out in her, like her beautiful writing. And that was one that was over the door. So I re remember seeing it. I think it's Robert Bly. I'm going to have to look it up. We'll put it in the notes. But it sounds like this is what you're talking about, really. Just stretching yeah. the moment with curiosity. Yes. Curiosity Not over, instead of judgment, mm -hmm. right? Judgment is at least a recurring pattern of thought that I have, and I'm probably not alone. Mm -hmm. Curiosity is, um, you know, I wonder why that is. Um, or Mr. Spock used to just look at things and everyone else was freaking out. He would go fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that. <laughs> Be the casual observer. And it, one of the companies I worked for way back when, the, the posters were three words, be here now. And so one of the things that we tend to do when we look at this large to-do list is, well, how do I get this all done in a given day? Well, I will multitask. Well, multitasking is... Everyone's um, good at it, right? Not, <laughs> let's just say it's not <laughs> good at all. Right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding it, it causes i mean it, the things that that it, your brain is just really switching between things so multitasking will cause mistakes will cause stress and at the end of the day the way our brain works is when we focus fully on one thing at a time we're building new neural networks or in simple terms we're learning but when we multitask all the time we're not learning much because we're not doing anything long enough for it to be building the memories you want. That's the most compelling reason anyone has ever given me to stop multitasking. <laughs> oh my God. I, I, I remember back in college, it was like, a, I remember like professors would tell us you need to be able to multitask when you, when you go into the job. And I, so I just had this mindset of, all right, I guess I have to be a really good multitasker and you know, have it on my resume and everything else. And then you get into the workforce and realize, yeah, that's not, <laughs> it's, no, I'm, I'm half-assing mul multiple things and not whole-assing one thing. As, I think, what is that? Ron, Ron Swanson, I think. that's Ron, I, I have my really great inspirational quotes as well. Ron Swanson. <laughs> There, so there were doctors share this study with you. I love, I love that um, whole app. Well, that reminds me of something else, which is a whole nother. <laughs> um, I think it was, I think it was King's College uh, in London and did a study and it was three groups. And um, there was a control group, which is we're going to give you a series of tasks um, and a certain amount of time, get them done. We'll grade how well you did them. That's the control group. The second group, here's the deal. You're going to take a couple of bong hits and you're going to do these tasks and we're going to grade you at the end of the time. <laughs> Third group was um, no bong hit, um, same tasks, but every, one, every once in a while we're going to shoot you a text and you just, just reply to it. It'll be pretty simple. So it was control, high on drugs, being interrupted. <laughs> well, of course, the control group did the best. Yeah. But the stoners did the second best. <laughs> so, you know. And of course, everyone says, so you're advocating that I get a high before I come to work. No, <laughs> exactly. That's, 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 not. that's the lesson. <laughs> it's it's, it's <laughs> the conclusion that this multitasking really does not produce very good short-term results or long-term results. Right. 
well, the way I cook dinner is going to look different because that's what <laughs> <laughs> I <I'm Yeah>. <laughs> Just to see where all the pot's going. And it doesn't have anything to do with bug hits. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I love it. That's a fascinating study, though. Yeah. Well, yeah. let me bring us to a somewhat close here. And I want to ask one more question. Um, mm-hmm. Although I have like 15 more, but I'm going to ask one question. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let's like, let's kind of imagine this ideal state. What's What's the impact of us being more mindful? Yes. Um, I think there's two, two things. One, you're, you're healthier. We are healthier. Um, we will with, with this chronic, cause when we're under chronic stress, there's hormone cortisol, there's certain hormones, you know, screaming through our body that are not healthy for us long-term. So we will have lower bro- blood pressure. We will have a lower resting heart rate. Um, we will sleep better. We will feel better. We'll physically be better. Um, emotional stability. All these wonderful things for our long-term health. And then our effectiveness at work. So there, so that's a being. That's you long-term. You show up at work. You're going to make better decisions. You are going to be a better problem solver. You're going to build better relationships with people. Because you didn't, you didn't react to something negative. You stayed calm. Um, you're more intentional. So the goal, you'll, you'll set goals and you'll have a better chance of reaching those. So I don't know, you know, I don't think we're going to make it if we're not more mindful. Yeah. Um, and the, and you'll see results pretty quickly with minimal effort. That's my promise. We have one final set of questions for you. Did we warn you about this, Larry? I honestly don't remember. No. Oh, rabbit fire. Oh, oh this will be Good. very it's, spontaneous. It's better. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I think it's my turn. I don't remember, but we'll, I'll, I'll go for it. Great. All right, Larry, these are very difficult questions, and your life is on the line with these questions. I hope you know. So question one, coffee or tea in the morning? Coffee. Oh, it's an easy one. Yeah, same. I'm still <laughs> drinking coffee, and it's afternoon. Uh, early bird or night owl work style? Early bird. Good for you. <laughs> what about an app, a platform, or software that you swear by for your work? Hmm. I like something called Workflowy. It is simple list maker that works mm-hmm. on uh, computer and all your iPhone, iPad, and it's instantaneous updates. And it's yeah. there's a free version. And it helps you no, not no. multitask? It, it's a list mate. So I just put stuff, well, it's off my head. Like, oh, I got to, let me jot that down. And then I don't have to think about it anymore. Nice. Hmm. I dig it. What about a book that has made a significant impact on you? Oh, there are many. The latest, which I really liked, was it's called Be Your Future Self Now mm. by Dr. Benjamin Hardy. It's written down. All right. Uh, last question. If you could have a water cooler chat with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be and why? That's also pretty. I, it would have to be the Dalai Lama. Mm-hmm. Um one of, I mean, there's a lot he knows about mindfulness for sure. And I love the fact that despite what's going on we, in the world, the things that might not be great, and there are plenty of those, um, he's compassionate. He's always laughing mm-hmm. and smiling. And that's like, the question, what's your secret? Like, I do this stuff, but I'm not, how do I get to your level? Mm-hmm. And would I look good in that robe? <laughs> of course you would all right well thank you very much larry this has been a great conversation a mindful conversation if if we might if we might use that term i think it fits i feel a little bit more calm and relaxed it's uh, after this conversation so i appreciate it same yeah. every every time you mentioned taking deep breaths i took a deep breath i did too yeah you're already <laughs> Yeah, it works. I, and I do have a list. In, in, if you ever like 10 things, 10 books or that uh, to learn more about mindfulness. 
So I, I can it. get that over to you at some point. Love it. I'll add it to the description. Thank you so much. It's been such a delight. Thank you. Have a mindful day. <laughs> that's how we close the show. That's how we do it, Rachel. We've been trying to figure out how to close the show, and maybe that's Have a it. Mindful day. <laughs> Add it to the list. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for listening to Water Cooler Wisdom. This podcast is brought to you by Interaction Associates, a leading professional development and leadership training organization whose mission is to help people work better together. If you'd like to learn more, visit interactionassociates.com. If you have questions, comments, or are interested in collaborating with this podcast, you can email us at watercoolerwisdom at interactionassociates.com.